All right, shalom to the hopeful elect. Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh, all praises, honor and glory be to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh, which is the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Honors be to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and like minded elders is teaching this word truthfully and in sincerity. Barakim La, Habayath, Madabada, blessings to the house of David, which are you brothers laboring on the four corners of the earth, giving all diligence to make your calling of election sure, and pushing this word relentlessly. Day in and day out, unto the hopeful elect, the Akim, the brothers, Wa'akwath, and sisters that also listen and believe on the glorious gospel that's being preached. Unto you, I say, Shalom. Shalom beats the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, you believing brothers and sisters, right, that are listening and have returned by way of truth. So I'm going to go into this article that you see here on the screen from BBC.com, and it's dated the 18th of December, 2023. Now it says, the Pope says, um, Roman Catholic priests can bless same sex couples. And I just want to get a little bit of this article because the, you know, the gist of this lesson is going to be, you know, that the, um, that the Roman Catholic church on down to Christianity is what makes up in the Bible was known as the false prophet that would deceive the world right in these last days. And, and it has, and has been not just right now, currently, but, for some length of time. That's a part of major part of the B system. We're going to touch on that through the spirit of Yahweh Shemir Rashad. Now it says Pope Francis has allowed priests to bless same sex couples, a significant advance for LGBT, which we know that goes into the LGBT community, goes into the alphabet people in the Roman Catholic Church. Now it says they're allowing priests now to bless same sex couples to officiate, right? And to actually uh, be a part of overseeing that, where, where in times past, that wasn't the case. So now that's being pushed, which is more of the wine, the philosophies, and the doctrine of devils, when you're reading the scriptures, that's being pushed in these last days. Now, it says Pope Francis um, has, has allowed priests to bless same-sex couples, which is a significant change. The leader of the Roman Catholic Church said priests should be permitted to bless same sex and irregular couples under certain circumstances. But the Vatican said blessings should not be part of regular church rituals or related to civil unions or weddings. It added that it continues to view marriage as between a man and a woman. Pope Francis approved a document issued by the Vatican announcing the change on Monday. The Vatican said it should be a sign that God welcomes all. But the document says priests must decide on a case by case basis. So we see this is all confusion, right? Which and it's just wickedness, which is pushing the fact that if you are, you know, a mo, if you are of the alphabet community, that that is being recognized now by the false prophet in these last days, showing you that this man's system and, and this man Esau Edom truly is the wicked. He's the wicked that the scriptures speak of, right? He's the devil, the deceiver of the earth. Now, let's get into the fact that the false prophet would be here in the last days when you read in the Holy Scriptures. And I got a few precepts to touch on, and we'll, we'll just touch on it through the spirit. And, you know, and I pray once again, this lesson is edifying, exhorting, and comforting, which is Philippians 4 and 7, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, Going into the false prophet, Revelation 16 and 13, it says, and I, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. This is the Apostle John on the island of Patmos receiving, you know, these different uh, uh, revelations. So the book of Revelation is the revealing of these things that would be happening in the last days. Right. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. So you see the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are being linked together. Right? So this is e EU, NATO, um, and also um, America, right? Which is the beast system that was that's spoken about all throughout the book of uh, Revelation. Right? So this is an actual system of governance. And that goes back to those unclean spirits being the uh, the military prowess, the power, the military industrial complex, as it's known, 
the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, which is, you know, the pushing of its money system and the religious aspect, which is the false prophet. Right. So that's the false prophet that we see, which is once again, the Roman Catholic Church down to Christianity. Now, here's more information and more understanding pushing forth, showing the false prophet when you read the Bible that would deceive the people in the last days. Now, it says this here it says a list of Christian denominations by number of members. Now, before I get that, I got another one. Let's see if I got it here. Let's get this one. Right. Now, this I just looked it up as a simple Google search. Right. How many Catholics, how many um, Catholics are there in the world? Now, it says here Catholicism has one point three, four, five, one, one billion, three hundred and forty five million. Right. People. That's the estimation. It says a map of Catholicism by population percentage. Catholicism is the largest branch of Christianity with one point three, four, five billion, one billion, three hundred and forty five million. Right. And the Catholic Church is the largest among churches. So the false prophet, the power it has is that it's the largest amongst all churches. So when you add those numbers up with the numbers we're going to see here, let's let's read. This is a list of Christian denominations by number of members. It is inevitably partial and generally based on claims by the denominations themselves. The numbers should therefore be considered approximate. Now it goes down here to show those numbers. Now let's get it further here. Let's go right to the point. It says Christianity is the largest religious group in the world with an estimated 2.3 to 2.6 billion adherents in 2020. So we are in 2023. So that number clearly has grown as there's more and more people on the planet, you know, um, and the population continues to increase. So this estimation, this guesstimation is that there's between 2.3 to 2.6 billion, which is headed once again by Catholicism, which a lot of the Northern Kingdom are Catholics, right? So, which would you so-called Latinos and Native Americans? Well, first, first and foremost, predominantly to you so-called Latinos. Um, so now, going back to the false prophet that we're reading about. So the false prophet will be deceiving the world by these different miracles. So when you leave from Revelation 16, you go over to Revelation 19 chapter, Right. Let's go to the point. Speaking on the false prophet. Going into. Um, Roman Catholicism and. Christianity. This is what's deceiving the world. Now, it says here the sub uh, heading the doom of the beast and the false prophet. So there's destruction coming to the beast and the false prophet, the system of governance. Now, it says and the beast was taken and with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, it says, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast. So this is a part of this system that's going to push, right, the mark as the new currency, the new way of life that you won't be able to buy or sell in Revelation, the 13th chapter without this mark, which is, you know, receiving the chip, the RFID chip. That's the mark, it says, of the beast. And them that worship his image and who's worshiping the image, those that take on the ways of this culture and ultimately those that that ultimately receive the chip as opposed to being against it. And the believers of, of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah is going to stand against, right, taking the mark of the beast, which is it is wickedness. It is a sin to receive the mark of the beast, right, because you're going to be destroyed for it. Now. It says, these were both cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. That lake of fire is going to be here in Babylon the Great. So now you're going to have Israelites that's going to be on the four corners of the earth that's going to take, you know, the chip as well, right? Because it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, um, a worldwide thing. He calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their forehead or in their hand. So now this is going to be a worldwide thing. So but that lake of fire is going to be here in Babylon the Great, which is America. Now, let's touch on this part here. It says, and the beast was taken, that means destroyed, and with him the false prophet, speaking of the religious aspect of the system, that wrought miracles before him, it says, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. So that's the ultimate deception, which that's in the book of 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter tells you, 
that the Lord will give, you know, those uh, 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 the, the, the unbelievers over, you know, to deception. Let me just get that real quick. So this deception that's going on is for those that, that are not the believers, those that are not the elect. Let's show that. Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, speaking of Esau, Edom, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's the false prophet here in the last days. Continuing on, let's go right down to the point. Um, verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Speaking of, once again, Esau, Edom, right? Verse 10, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So a lot of our people are about to perish as opposed to returning to this truth and, and repenting in hopes of salvation. So that's the alternative, either return and repent and come back to being an Israelite or deny the truth and perish. Verse 11, for this cause, the most high shall send them strong delusion. So those that believe in this, you know, in the B system and ultimately is going to take the chip. That's the strong delusion. That's one example for this cause. The most high shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. So all those that don't believe in this truth, right, is being you know, presented unto them and it's being spread throughout the four corners of the earth, precept upon precept, line upon line, right? Those that deny it, that they all might be damned. They're going to be given over to condemnation, destruction, who believe not the truth because they don't believe in the words of truth, but it had pleasure in unrighteousness. So a lot of our people are going to refuse the truth and continue to refuse the truth because it says they have pleasure in unrighteousness. So let's show further, touching on, you know, what makes a false prophet here in a second. So we got the false prophet, right? And what makes a false prophet? But I got one more I want to touch on here. Let's go to the book of Revelation. We were in what the 19th chapter, I believe. Let's go over one more chapter going into the false prophet, right? The Roman Catholic Church and Catholicism. While we started the article, you know, uh, to, at the start of the lesson, while we read it, came into the article, first and foremost. So this is Revelation 19. And... um. Or Revelation 20, so like it, and verse 10. Revelation 20 and 10, and it reads, And the devil, the deceiver, Esau, Edom, that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So that's the duration of time. Destruction is going to come to the wicked and his system, the beast system. Esau, Edom, the man of sin, you know, which is America, the head of that, that rides the back of the beast, the beast system, the EU and NATO. Right. So this is all going to be destroyed. Right. This system of governance, which is what's ruling the earth today, is going to be destroyed. So this deception that we're, that we're he hearing about over and over again is speaking of the false prophet. So what makes a false prophet? Right. A few precepts that come to mind. This is uh, the book of Jeremiah. So another way we can attribute. Esau, Edom in this system to being a false prophet. Just a few precepts, right? Is let's understand what a false prophet is in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, through the precepts. Jeremiah 3 and 15, and I will give you pastors, which would be shepherds, leaders, according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Another one that comes to mind here is in the book of Isaiah. Just hit me in the spirit. Isaiah, the 30th chapter, right? And the 20th verse. So the Lord said he would give us Pastors in these last days, leaders and shepherds, according to his heart, which would feed the believers with knowledge and understanding. Clearly, right, this is not going on by the false prophet because they're giving our people, right, every way but the way of truth. They're giving us everything but what's found in the word to, that's righteous and holy, the laws, statutes, and commandments. This is the book of Isaiah 30 and 20. It says, And though the Lord or Hadawan give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. So our eyes are seeing our teachers today. Your brothers woke up to this truth by hearing the word going out, you know, on the Internet and then actually hearkening to the prophets and then coming into the faith that way. Right. So now the word is going out. So those teachers that the Lord said he would give according to his heart, 
will be teaching according to his word, according to his will, ultimately. So a false prophet will be doing the opposite. That's the deception, the lies. That's the system, the system to set up, right? It's here to deceive and destroy, you know, you Israelites. So now another precept that comes to mind going into what makes a false prophet, right? Just a few. It's the book of Isaiah 8 and 20. It says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So if a person calls himself a bishop, a preacher, a pastor, you know, a shepherd, right? A prophet, whatever. They should be speaking according to the words of Yahweh Shemirashah and only his words, right? As it pertains to this truth. So this is the book of 1 Peter 4 and verse 11. And it reads, and I'll highlight it real quick. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the most high. If any man minister, let him do it. It says, as of the ability which the Most High giveth, that the Most High in all things may be glorified through Yahweh Hamashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever a month. So if any man is speaking, he's supposed to be speaking according to the words of the Most High, right? And if he's serving and ministering, it's supposed to be according to the, to the will of the Most High, according to his words. That's how you would know a false prophet from one that is, is an actual a shepherd of the Lord. Right now, as it pertains to the false, the false prophet, which is found in the book of Revelation that we've been reading. Now, that is Esau, Edom and his system. Now, there's also, you know, for false prophets that's out as individual people. But as a collective, that system of governance is a part of the false prophet. So now let's see also what a false prophet would not be doing that a, a true prophet would be doing and how. A true prophet will be set up in these last days. Malachi 2 and 7, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So you got you got the, the, the Pope here who's telling you things that's contrary to the knowledge that's found in the Bible. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord, Yahweh of hosts. So those are the true messengers of Yahweh Bashim Yabashah, it says. He is the messenger of Yahweh Bashim Yabashah of hosts, right? So... Our people will be seeking to those that would have the knowledge that's found in the Bible, not those that speaking contrary to what's found in the Holy Scriptures, right? Which Christianity and, and Roman Catholicism speak co completely and totally and utterly against what's found in this Bible, against the law, statutes, and commandments. Now I'm going to go down here to verse 10, Malachi 2 and 10. It says, have we not all one father? Have not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning? It says the covenant of our fathers. And what's that covenant is the law, statutes and commandments, profaning it, being against that, right? Being contrary to truth. So we clearly see for them to say, let's go back here. We started the lesson here that the Pope says that the Roman Catholic priests can bless same sex couples. Clearly these would not be the priests of the heavenly father. Yahweh, why you have a shot. These would be false prophets and pertaining to, um, the 14th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, starting at the ninth verse on down, you know, you, to the, about the 11th verse, it tells us the Most High is going to separate, right, and destroy the false prophets from among his people, that has polluted his people. And that, that's all throughout the Holy Scriptures. The whole chapter of, Jer of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, touches on that, right, the false prophets. So now, the profaning of the words of the Heavenly Father and the covenant is what the recompense is going to be to these devils. Now, let's show that before we close it out. This is the book of Romans, the first chapter. And I'll go right to the point in verse 18. Now, here it says in the subheading, unbelief and its consequences, God's anger at sin. It says, for the wrath of the Most High is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So these men are men that hold the truth in unrighteousness. This is the false prophet, first and foremost, down to those that are contrary to the truth, that are contrary to, the, to this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God or the Most High have showed it unto them, the believers. He revealed this understanding unto the believers. So the wrath of the Most High is going to be revealed against all ungodliness, Right. So this is ungodliness to tell, you know, uh, uh, or, to, or to promote on the earth that the most high God, as it was said in the article, 
you know, is basically for all. He's a God for all. He's a, he's for the moles. He's for the holes. He's for whoever. Well, that's contrary to what's found in the Bible. The most high is for his people, first and foremost, and those that are going to repent. Right. That's who he's for. Let me show that real quick. So that came up in mind. I believe that's um, Acts, the 13th chapter. The most high is for his people. And then the elect that's going to repent, first and foremost. Acts 13 and 26, men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham. That's the righteous line when you go into that word stock. And whosoever among you fear the power, those that fear him is those that return to keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, and faith. To you is the word of this salvation sent. So this word, right, and those that are going to come back into the covenant, it's only for those that have fear and that return and repent. You have to have faith and works to show whereby you believe. So let's close it out with this. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. And it reads, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Be not deceived. So you are deceived if you believe that the Most High is dealing with, you know, the alphabet community. Or that, you know, that that's um, that blessing them or, or, or officiating their weddings or whatever the case is, being joined with them in any way, if that's okay in the eyes of the Most High. Once again, that was in the article, right? Right here, that was in the article. Here it says, Pope Francis approved a document issued by the Vatican announcing the changes on Monday. The Vatican said it should be a sign that God welcomes all, that the Most High is okay with this. Well, that's totally against the scriptures. First Corinthians six and verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of, of the most high. Be not deceived. So those that believe that are deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. This would be what? Moles, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. If you a man and you land with mankind, are you supposed to be put to death? The scriptures say. Right. If a woman lying with the woman, a man lying with the man, it must be put to death. So it says they're not going to inherit the kingdom, meaning the most high is not dealing with them. So clearly the most high is not dealing with this, this system of living, the beast system right here in the last days and the false prophet. Right. Which all makes up a part of that system, the system of wickedness and that system that the most high is sending his son, Yahweh Shai, to come and destroy ultimately. Right. So with that, I pray this lesson was edifying, exhorting, and comforting unto the believers. I want to give all praises, infinite honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, Barakatai Yahweh, Barakatai Yahweh Shai. All praises, honor, and glory be to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Honors be to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and like minded elders is teaching this word truthfully and in sincerity. Barakim La, Habayath, Madabada, blessings to the house of David, which are you brothers laboring on the four corners of the earth. And to the Akim Wa'akwath, brothers and sisters that also listen and believe on the glorious gospel being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. Unto you, I say, Shalom.